Hello, I'm the White Doctor and welcome to my Let's Play Master of Orion 3. And a few rounds have passed, we have uh, quite a few colonies now. Slowly we're building up our military, we build a few more mobi mobi mobilization centers, which allow us to um, build our task forces in other systems beside our home system and well the only guys we know are still peaceful and your technologies are developed well everything is fine which is quite boring actually if you <laughs> try to LP this bastard of a game even with the Ultima mod so let's talk about diplomacy instead the diplomacy system in Master of Orion 3 is quite fancy, uh, if you'll think about it. It's a game from 2002, uh, almost 10 years old now, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the game has all the basic stuff. Non-aggression pacts, trading, uh, spy pacts, uh, pacts to, to help you as a research, you can ex ex exchange technologies and all that stuff. Basically, uh, the more you talk with uh, other races, the more they like you. But there is a nice little twist. Here I <laughs> keep looking at my resource. Um, here we have the System Defense Force. The, ra the, the ones I just marked red are obsolete and I just junked them. And it gets <laughs> ridiculous, uh, ridiculous otherwise. Sooner or later you can blast all ships away with a single shot or something like that. So it's just a waste of resources. So back to diplomacy. And and by the way, yes, uh, next time I will speak a bit over about economy to explain all those oh, weird numbers on the left side. Uh, this time you only need to know that I'm uh, by basically building and colonizing like mad because well there's no one stopping me and I have a wildly aggressive race who isn't that good at actually fighting and has a, a, ra a rather slow population growth so it's better to plan ahead if you play silicoids that's all I say this planet, for example, uh, is planned to be uh, some kind of self-sufficient research planet with lots of industry because, well, it's large, so I can have everything I want, essentially, uh, with a slow priority of research. But uh, it's a long time until the planet is worth anything. Well, but since there are no enemies around... Mm, well, what the heck I am talking about, even if there are enemies, it's important to have research and industry and uh, since the planet ha is rich in minerals and our people eat minerals, well, it's everything we want, actually. And the good thing with the silicoids is they uh, aren't that mm, finicky with planets and stuff. Ah, I see our friends are using the non-aggression pack to come visit us. Uh, 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 let's talk with them. Well, never mind. Back to diplomacy. As you can see, you can make contact with them and you can threaten them. You can end all trading contracts immediately. You can uh, end all uh, treaties immediately. Declare war. You can try to get a defense alliance. Or full alliance. The difference is uh, with a defensive alliance, they only help if you attack them. So get attacked by a full alliance. You can even drag them into a war with you. You can make your economic uh, economic treaties, trading pacts. You can even get better ones uh, if you keep on pestering your friends. Informationen, information is essentially a spy pact. You are exchanging secret informations. Forschung is research. 
then you can give them something uh, to better uh, relations or you can uh, try to get something by threatening them and then there are uh, lots of stuff you can well you can essentially choose the emotional state like you can try to be as cranky as possible or you can try to be nice and uh, other races um, do not react the same all the time some uh, some like it if you are nice some like it if you're a bit more forcefully some like it if you uh, um, emotionless in your approach stating the obvious and all that bit, bit. Mm, essentially you have to try sometimes they will hate you no matter what you do especially <laughs> if you take uh, diplomacy as some kind of dumb stat in the beginning but well that's it uh, yeah, and you get nice videos of the, the enemy uh, ambassador talking to you. Sometimes they're just telling. Oh, I almost forgot. As you even saw, sorry, I meant as you just now saw, uh, there is a short me message uh, you can look up uh, under your relationship, which essentially lists everything. Uh, how you are doing, how much they like you, what uh, treaties you have with those guys and such things. And well that's it essentially. Uh, there's other stuff out, I'll get to it if it comes up. Yeah I know just blindly building stuff. Mm, you using abbreviations to remember what exactly I am building. LAC, for example, just tells me it's something without uh, a hyperdrive. Essentially, just some light attack craft. Yeah, LAC <laughs> to protect the system. And, uh, other abbreviations. Well, if there are ever a large-scale battles to show off, then I will be talk a bit more about them. Uh, now it seems like well, it's all forgotten until like as soon as I get to that point. But well, at least this time I will actually have a fleet as soon as I meet an enemy. Normally my obsessive desire to, desire to have the most modern fleet like ever uh, leads to an interesting first context to say the least. Normally I'm immediately attacked and then have to build a fleet <laughs> ad hoc as soon as possible and then after retreating a bit I just waste my enemies since they're uh, well, uh, well normally one or two generations on technology behind because of my <laughs> deranged way of um, building stuff and this time well this time it isn't so badly on the other hand, I never had a p peaceful start like that. Normally, we would al re already be in a war, but well, it seems like we looked out here. Eh, sadly, it's not as interesting as I have hoped, but well, let's see if we can show off the, the real time battles next time, hopefully. Uh, 96 galactic cycles, so and so much rounds, and I'm building like crazy. <laughs> Interesting fact: you should always have have an eye on what the AI is doing for you, because sometimes they have really weird ideas. For example, you can uh, go to the rider right, uh, left side down, uh, third from the right, Imperium. There you can find, um, sorry I was talking about financial, the financial rider, second on the left, uh, down, on the lower left side, wow, yes, English is hard. Well, and there you can 
order your AI control roles to spend additional money on stuff like research and something and military and that's like the worst idea ever because if you order your AI worlds to spend more money they will try and do it even on worlds that aren't all research worlds for example if you just say well I had I to go to this slider and make my AI, AI worlds do more research which will essentially just waste money Lots of money, big time. Because even you say an industrial world with lots of industrial output, but not exactly geared to research, will just try to at least spend lots and lots of money on research if you order all your AI worlds to do it. To do it. And if you say use the slider to automatically build more military, then everything else will suffer. Essentially, you should never ever go to those sliders. Uh, use a few large worlds for your own devices, for your larger ships, and do your best to outthink the stupid AI on your own worlds. Uh, that's all. Don't know if you noticed, last round, our friends, the MCs, were m mad like hell. Mm, lots of posturing and threatening words, but essentially they are still our friends. But well, uh, now I'm build more direct fire ships and a light carrier, so standard stuff, and <laughs> new researchers rolling in. Soon I have to essentially rebuild a new second, more modern f b fleet because, well, in MO3 there is no ref refitting or something. A ship build is a ship build. It automatically repairs between battles, it gets automatically new ammunition between battles, and has an unending supply of fighters, but... Refitting? What's that? Yeah, it's a bit weird, but essentially you will really ha have to try to build your ships as modern as possible because an older ship build is well, wasted money, wasted time, wasted industry. The only thing it's good for is to fight even all the enemies. Yeah. Luckily, planetary defenses are always the most modern you can build. Which is nice, except when not. When not, it's when you researched something with <laughs> some kind of weapon that was, uh, was actually worse than the weapon you have uh, sitting in all your ships because then your defenses on the ground will automatically use the new worse weapon instead of the better one because well you have no choice yeah those dudes on the ground do what they want and to hell with, with, with what the empire wants or the emperor yeah that's kind of democracy in action or more like stupid AI, AI in action. But well, most of the time it's good, because planetary defenses are really, really evil. In the beginning they can easily destroy uh, an entire task force mm, in a few shots. And because they easily outrange every weapon you can put on chips, mm, the only way in the early game to actually conquer a world is, well, Build carriers because they don't because your carriers can send a never-ending stream of fighter jets and even if your fighter scale gets blown a fighter all and horribly dying in the deep vacuum of space a few minutes later the second wave is started and the third and so on and if you're lucky you're attacking a world without fighter fighters of their own so you don't even have to defend your ships. If you make sure your carriers are far enough away from your target planet, then you can't get even get attacked with rockets and space torpedoes. Which is the second uh, thing uh, planetary defenses can fuck you up, up with, because they have 99 salvos to blast off, and larger salvos than most of your ships in the beginning, or even task forces in the beginning of, your, of the game can dish out. And those salvos really hurt. Uh, so essentially, if you want to attack a planet, 
bring uh, transports, don't forget those transports, but don't bring them in too early because that can easily backfire and with your transports blown up you also lose your uh, transported troops, logically. And then just send in the fighters. Or sometimes you get even more lucky and find a planet still undefended. In which essentially is just an invitation to bring in your troops and take it over. Well, except for if it's one of your many friends. Maybe you playing diplomatically or something wussy like that. Well, it's on you. Here I'm building point defense ships because I already know what's, uh, what uh, rockets and stuff can do, so I plan ahead. It's also time for more diplomacy and stuff like that. And holy hell, I can't even talk fast enough to keep up <laughs> with my own um, recording. Well, that's something I should d try to amend next time. Not playing like some some kind of idiot savant and completely uh, completely forgetting that I have to talk over all that stuff. I'm just skip uh, skipping over here. Ah, yes. So 68 rounds and we are still at peace. Yeah, yeah, t keep talking, asset. You are victims soon enough. So, say you like us. Yeah. Weirdly enough. Sadly, all our colony ships are still on their way. Some take an uh, incredible 35 or 29 rounds to arrive. Ah yes, early game, uh, faster than light, engines are really crappy. But well, sooner or later that will change, then it will be a bit faster. And of course, well, as soon as we have mobilization centers in all our systems, only one per system is needed, so you don't have to build it four times or something like that. In the system with four planets, one one is all it takes to magi magically make your reserve ships appear out of nothing or to magically conjure up your armies out of your imperial reserve as, as we had teleporters standing around every on every mobilization center or something like that but well better not to question it I guess our magical reserve is the same point where all those uh, imaginary fighters keep coming out of. So, it seems our mega violent realm, the mighty crystal empire trying to conquer the Orion, Orion sector, is doomed to, well, peacefully expand. Well, it, it keeps surprising me because most of the time I play, play like a deranged psycho battling three or four races at once and this time we only meet one and I keep being friends with them. Normally I keep doing something to piss them off especially since uh, I'm often using diplomacy as some kind of as afterthought to my plans. Essentially I keep researching like mad, expanding like mad and as soon as I can I start building up my military forces and then I just keep on looking for easy victims. So, weird. This time, <laughs> it's the most peaceful ga game I have ever seen. One thing you may note as I looked upon our technology screen, uh, essentially you have a research point uh, generated every round and you can I uh, take the six large group of uh, of science stuff and can give them research points as a percentage of all your points. Well, you have economy, mathematics, energy, biology, uh, physics and socio sociology. Uh, the people stuff. Well, since silicoids like Megla are not good at people stuff and uh, like anathema to biology, 
I have lots of stuff in mathematics, energy for better technology, better weapons and physics because stuff like larger ship hulls and something needs lots of physics. That's essentially the most important stuff. Economy and sociology have a bit, few percentage more, 12 percent. Uh, as biology, 10 percent because well, there are a few technologies uh, that are quite important, but there uh, there is not that much stuff. Essentially, even if you play humans, you won't add too, won't change that too much. Essentially, 20 to 30 per percent to physics, similar to mathematics and energy and whatever is left over. You will add to economy, biology and sociology. Whatever has the stuff you want more gets a few percentages more. And that's it. Essentially, since the enemy AI is stupid as a rock, they just mm, keep on researching what they think would be the best for their kind of race, which essentially means even if um, they seem to be one or two levels ahead, since they are, their own levels are more spread out evenly, they will have some stuff you don't have, but on average we will uh, easily outpace them on mathematics, energy and physics. Except of course if you take your research capabilities as a junk stat, then you will have to uh, really try to keep up, because if you fall back too much, just don't do it, believe me. It's uh, humili 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 ah, humiliating and for your empire if you uh, keep on skimping on research, because let's just say it's not nice if you find out too late your enemy has a few uh, classes shield, uh, on shields more than you and large generators to boot and suddenly you can't even hurt them. That's the kind of stuff nightmares are built, built out of. Uh. So, new round, new luck. I'll keep looking what's up with our, our growing empire. I keep wondering why do the MCs like us so much? It's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exploring new systems, following the star lanes, looking up colony ships, making sure the AI doesn't fuck up. Oh uh, yeah, our silicoids use the individualistic treat to strike. Actually, I'm lying. Even if your people are the most fascistic fascist Nazis uh, imaginable, there will still uh, sometimes protest uh, like mad even against something completely harmless like better colony ships or something like that. Similar like to this greater colony crystal. To build into colony ships to make colonizing easier. It's like I said in the beginning I think uh, one colony ship can easily colony one green marked world in an ideal world for your people. But if it's yellow, you need like two ships to get over the threshold. And if it's red, you need three or even four ships. With a greater crystal, you essentially get two colony modules for the price of one or something like that. You can even build, if you want, larger ships with more colony mo modules to emulate <laughs> something similar. Especially if you have a race who doesn't have some extra technology like that. I don't know, most have them. But sometimes they're not in the same technology range. We can see Greater Crystal now, for example. I don't know, the Mechla have a similar technology. Uh, but I don't know if you can see them. Hmm. I can look it up next time. If I don't forget it. Now I have done something evil. Ah, here, look, here, yeah, it's three-dimensional, the map, yeah. Uh, I have started building uh, fighter garrisons in some of my systems. Yeah, fighter garrisons. And of course, uh, the fighter garrisons 
uh, planet side are uh, as stupid as uh, your fighters on, bo on board your carrier ships because they're infinite. They keep sending up new... Uh, your garrisons will keep sending up new squadrons even if the, the, the ones they keep sending up are totally wasted by the enemy. Essentially, you will start your squadrons, then you will refuel the imaginary ones, then we'll start them and then rinse repeat. If the battle goes on long, on, on long enough, then you will see what I mean. Take something ridiculous, normally I take 7 minutes or something like that and even that uh, is easily enough for 2 or even 3 uh, squadrons starting from one sh single sh ship uh, or one task force of ships. So essentially if you have a ship with 10 fighters and 4 of them then you send out 40 fighters, 2 minutes later you send 40 fighters out, 2 minutes later you send 40, 40, 40 fighters out. Yeah, it's weird. I mean Master of Reuron 3 can emulate ammunition with rockets so why can't they emulate uh, fighters exactly? I personally think it has something to do with balance because, well, if you only have one uh, fighter squadron and that, uh, that squadron gear gets blasted into Nirvana, then essentially uh, your ships are completely helpless and have to retreat. Your carriers, at least. Well, even if they have, if you build some kind of Verdu, Verdu, weird carrier with lots of weapons and not that much fighters but well why should you do something stupid like that essentially with a never ending but slow never ending stream of ever new fighters maybe the programmers thought uh, they could well keep having them useful or something well uh, oh shit over time well, next time I'll try uh, to maybe play and talk at the same time to prevent stuff like that. And now I better stop talking. Mm, I'm guessing seeing a black screen isn't all that funny. So, until next time, White Doctor out.